Today we're talking about Pili and how to play and build her exactly, because this is a guide for Pili. In this guide we'll talk about the ability leveling, what the different benefits of the abilities are, we're gonna talk about the itemization of the character, and we're gonna talk about the general playstyle as well as the weaknesses. Now I've talked about Pili in a few videos before and I have played her a ton on PTS, but something has changed since the first iteration of her on PTS and I briefly want to go over those changes first so you're up to date if you've seen the other videos. So the 3 was nerfed a little bit because it was way too strong for her early clear. It's still a very good ability though. She can no longer basic attack cancel on the 3. It also doesn't activate Hydra's Lament for that matter but it never did. And she can also no longer use the combination of using her 2 first and then her blink. If you're completely new to Pili, that won't matter to you at all, but if you've already played her or heard about her, these things are changed and that has an impact on how she feels, but not an incredibly high one. Now as for her current kit, let's talk about the abilities first and then go over the leveling order. Her passive is Everlasting Flame. When Pili drops below 50% health, she gains increased power and lifesteal and ability lifesteal. So she gets plus 5 power and then plus 2 per level on top of that, so up to 25. She gains 20% ability lifesteal and 40% lifesteal from basic attacks. The duration of the passive is 6 seconds, but it has a cooldown of 20 seconds. If after 20 seconds you're still below 50% health, then the passive will reactivate as soon as you use a damaging ability or basic attack on an enemy, so you won't lose it after 20 seconds, it will start whenever you get into a fight and you can heal up that way again. The sustain you get from this should not be underestimated, it can really save you in a team fight if you keep fighting. Her first ability is Pyroclast. This is basically a projectile that gets sent forward and then small return projectiles. On the lowest rank only one projectile will return, on higher ranks more projectiles return, up to 5 on the highest rank of the ability. This ability also has two charges, similar to Agni Bombs, but what this means in the context of fighting is that you can either use two of them very quickly for burst, or use one and use the second one later, and the cooldown of the first one will already start counting down. Therefore, as long as you keep at least one shot of this ability on cooldown, it is constantly ticking down over and over again, though that obviously comes with a decent amount of mana cost as well. The regular cooldown per ability of Pyroclast is 14 seconds. Her second ability is Eruption, an AoE knock-up ability in a small circle around Pele that, when ranked up, gets multiple circles up to 3 and drastically increases its radius. On rank 1 and 2 you only have one circle, on rank 3 and 4 you have two circles, the second one here has a radius of 25 whereas the first one has a radius of 15, and on rank 5 you have a third circle with a radius of 35. The knockup depends on the circle, in the inner circle it's 280, the middle circle is 240 and in the outer circle it's 200. The damage on the outer circle and the middle circle is the same, the inner circle has higher damage. The cooldown of eruption is 15 seconds. Her third ability is Magma Rush. Magma Rush is a toggle ability with its own form of fuel, literally named fuel, and it also comes with no cooldown. This ability is a movement speed boost that comes along with a small circle AoE damage around you that takes for quite a while until the fuel runs out. If you completely deplete your fuel, it will take 20 seconds to restore the entire fuel. Magmaros still has a mana cost, but only 10 per use. The normal use of the ability gives you a 20% movement speed increase, while the amplified version, which is activated by using the ability again, gives you a 60% movement speed increase. Pele's ultimate is Volcanic Lightning. In its essence, it's a forward dash that will deal damage to a target. For the duration of the dash, you're CC immune and it starts right from the beginning of the dash, and at the end of the dash you deal damage. The target that you hit is also slow, the slow depends on the rank here. 20% slow at rank 1 and 40% slow at rank 5. Slow duration is 3 seconds. On top of that, your basic attacks also turn into cone attacks. That means after the first target you hit, targets behind them get hit as well in a relatively large cone radius and they all take that damage too. The damage is not your normal basic attack damage, instead it's a mix of base damage and scaling. This lasts for 3 basic attacks or 10 seconds. Note that while the cone radius is huge with a range of 60, you will have to basic attack a target in melee range to proc the cone damage. And that brings us to the leveling order. And I can tell you this much, that one isn't easy on Pili. I actually made a whole chart that will give you a better overview of why different abilities here have different values in terms of being leveled and why almost everything is possible. 
On the first level, the ability that you want to level is the three. But why would you level your escape first? Well, in this context, it's first of all worth noting, never use the three unamplified for damage. Damage is way too low on the amplified version compared to the amplified version, unless you just need a little bit of movement speed to stick to a target longer. But for clear, you should always be using the amplified version, which scales up significantly better. But even on level 1, the amplified version of Magma Rush will deal 20 damage every 0.5 seconds. That means 40 damage per second. Now technically the 1 can do a lot more damage with both projectiles, up to 160 to be precise. But the main reason for Magma Rush here is that it has no cooldown and it has completely negligible mana cost. You can use this on every camp to clear out especially the small minions very very quickly and then basic attack it down the bigger target. And if you conserve your few right, you can even use this to move between the camps and get more rotation speed going. Clearing with the 1 in comparison becomes way too mana hungry way too quickly in early game, so I would definitely stick to the 3 unless it gets nerfed more. After that, if you put your next point into the 2 or the 1, it's kind of up to you, it depends more of if you're looking for a gank, that's why I personally like the 2 and it can also disrupt enemies from trying to clear something, or if you're looking more for the quick lane clear with the 1. On level 4, I like to put one more point into Magma Rush, as it almost doubles the amplified damage from 20 to 35, and that helps so much with clear while still having very low mana cost. On level 5, you obviously want to put one point into your ultimate. And after this, it gets so weird and so complicated, especially if you're playing Pele in jungle. In solo or in middle, you will probably prioritize the 1, you may even not start with a 3, but looking at jungle here specifically, you can pretty much do almost anything, very much depending on your playstyle and your build. I'm just gonna show you the whole chart here so you have an overview of why things are so weird. The 1 is by far the biggest potential instant burst damage. Potential, because if you want to have that full damage, you have to hit all the returning projectiles. In that context, it's worth noting that the returning projectiles from the one have quite a bit of tolerance. You can actually stand in front of an enemy and even if the projectile was targeted away from them, the return projectile can still hit them because of the relatively wide hitbox. So technically, if you hit all the returning shots, a single shot of the one could have 320 base damage and 135% scaling, Meaning if you hit both shots right after each other, you would have 640 base damage and 270% scaling. That is the big benefit of maxing the 1, but at the same time the 1 is not that reliable in terms of damage and it just brings you damage. The total base damage increase per rank of this ability is 120 if all shots are hit and the total scaling increase per rank, which we normally don't have, is 30%. The 2 on the other hand comes with a significantly lower damage increase of only 45 on the inner circle and 40 on the outer circles and doesn't come with any scaling increase, but it can still be worth leveling and I often prefer at least leveling it to rank 3. That is due to the fact that the close range knockup isn't that reliable and it's relatively easy to get out, but from rank 3 on the ability is significantly harder to escape. And in rank 5 it's even more likely that you will hit someone. It's still not guaranteed, especially as the blink 2 combo doesn't work anymore, but it's relatively safe that you will get a knockup and that you will get your damage up, and that damage then also enhances everything else afterwards. If you get the knockup off, then it's more likely that you land more shots off your 1, and it's more likely that you get more ticks off your 3 and more basic attacks. So it may not sound as much as the other abilities, but it may still be more useful for you. The 3 on the other hand comes with an insane amount of base damage and scaling if you're managing to stick to a target, and that's with significantly lower mana cost than the 1. The damage of a single tick is 20 on rank 1 and 80 on rank 5 and increases by 15 per rank, has 20% scaling, but you can get up to 9 ticks of the amplified damage. Technically you also get another tick of the unamplified damage, I just left that out because it's very unlikely you're actually gonna get all of that on a target anyways. This theoretical damage, once again, is up to 720 base and another 180% scaling. So while I would recommend getting at least 3 points into Eruption to have the slightly larger knockup, you can really go with whatever you like and it also is down to your playstyle. For example, if you're somebody who likes to engage with the 3 more and use it to get into the fight, then you will get more out of leveling the 1 for extra damage, while if you often engage for example through blink and then use the 3 in the fight, you will get more damage out of the 3 itself when you level that. So it comes down to situations, playstyle and whatnot, but nothing here is really wrong. 
The only ability that I personally would not recommend leveling unless you're really going for team fights primarily and you have a lot of penetration is the ultimate. That is due to the fact that the ultimate scales with your basic attacks only to a certain degree. It scales for 40% of your physical power and then between 85 and 265 base damage on top of that. The values in game are actually not correct currently or the values are not working properly, we'll see what that is down the road. But either way, this means that you cannot get your full basic attack damage on the target that you're hitting when you use the ultimate. If you're using a power focus build, that effectively lowers your damage with basics, even on a single target. And that's why I personally hardly ever use the ultimate to actually engage into a fight. You have situations where you can do it when enemies are really clustered up and your tank is already in the front line, so you're not gonna get blown up as soon as you try that. But how often is that really the case? In most situations, as an assassin, you're looking for backline picks, even with Pele, you blink in somewhere or go in from the backline, and you will kind of wanna keep your ultimate to have an escape option out of that as well. And enemies will probably not be clustered up in the backline either, so hitting multiple targets is gonna be hard in the first place. I personally find myself using the ultimate mostly as an escape or as a finishing tool or distance closer if an enemy is getting away. And as such, I don't really need the points in the ult. A single point in the ultimate only increases the base damage of the dash by 80, which has a 90 seconds cooldown, so it's significantly longer than the other abilities. And a single basic attack with the cone attack gets a 45 damage increase per rank. What you have to keep in mind is that by not leveling the ability, you're putting yourself more behind in terms of basic attack damage output that you could do during the ultimate. So really be wary of that and when you want to use the ult in a single target boxing match, most of the time you probably won't unless they're getting away. If you're going for a full pen build and you have multiple frontliners that can set up for you, then it can be worth leveling the ultimate. Outside of that, I would say it's rarely the case. And that brings us to the items and this time I want to do things a little differently. I'll give you an overview of the items that I think are good for Pili and then I'll give you some example builds that could utilize a different strength of her. The starter item obviously depends on where you're playing her. In jungle it should normally be Assassin's Blessing, otherwise I would almost always recommend Mage's Blessing because she just wants to put out a lot of damage early on. Her boots should pretty much always be Warrior Tabai as you really want to have that power which she scales so well with and she doesn't need more movement speed or anything else. In terms of early game damage choices, I would recommend a penetration item. Which one you're going for depends on the situation. If they have healers, you go for Brawler's Beatstick. The other three kind of fill the same niche. You could go for Crusher for basically the highest amount of damage in most situations, Jolton's Wrath if you like a little bit more cooldown reduction for abilities, which I don't think is always the best choice as her 3 has no cooldown, but then again her 1 has 2 instances, so it can kind of be worth it for that. And otherwise, obviously there's the option of Heartseeker as well, to get even more burst scaling out if you prefer that playstyle. Going for Heartseeker can also help her late game build by the way. Then I would recommend a high power item as she has these great scalings. I personally like Soul Eater a lot on Pele, I think she's the perfect god for it. I've been saying this for a while that Soul Eater is actually a pretty good item, there just wasn't any god that made good use of it, and Pele, in my opinion, is this god. She has so much AoE in her kit that all benefits from the ability healing here because it's very easy to confirm, at least on someone in most situations, and it still comes with a truckload of power, is easy to stack and has some cool reduction along with it. As she has a hybrid playstyle where she uses basic attacks quite frequently and can stick to targets for a long time, the normal life steal obviously also helps. Alternatively, if you really don't want that lifesteal or you think the enemy team will heavily counter you with a lot of anti-heal, you can go for Transcendence for even more damage output. If that's not your choice and you want to have something a little more defensive, I would say Shifter's Shield is a very great choice for her, as it still comes with a lot of power, but it also comes with some defensive stats. Then I would recommend building a percentage penetration or defense item depending on who you're up against, how much damage they're doing to you and how much defense they've built. If you need percentage penetration, Titan's Bane is the way to go for her as she's so ability focused overall even though she uses basic attacks decently, often you will use your basic attacks after your abilities. Her defense options are Magi's Blessing primarily, which you will often want because she really gets shut down hard by CC and teamfights. Alternatively, you can go for Mantle of Discord with a little bit more protection and a better way to get out when you're low, which also synergizes with her passive giving her lifesteal when you're low. 
Heart of the Urchin is maybe a slightly more unusual choice as it doesn't have any utility outside of the defense and the health, but I think it's great for her as she often is in the middle of the fight and a decent amount more survivability also helps her utilize her passive again. So I think this is great and she also has a lot of kill potential around the mid game, so Heart of the Urchin shouldn't be too hard to stack for in many situations. Bulwark of Hope is actually pretty cool too. Again, the passive here helps her if you're against heavy magical damage. And Winged Blade is good if you're against a strong slow comp, which really hinders her a fair amount. There are a lot of hybrid items you can also make use of. Again, Shift the Shield, we already mentioned that. And also Masamune, which can in late game replace Boots as well, as she gets crazy movement speed from her 3, as long as you have built Heartseeker earlier on. So that's why I think in that particular combination that can be nice. Void Shield and Ancelia are always decent options if you need some hybrid choices, also good for her. And Gladiator's Shield and Runic Shield shouldn't be ruled out entirely. Gladiator's Shield to help her sustain even more, even though it didn't get the buff that it was originally intended to have. And Runic Shield because it's just a great magical defense choice with a little bit more survivability in some regards. Last but not least, Hydra's Lament should also be mentioned. I don't think it's worth as much on her anymore. And that is due to the fact that if you use her combo very quickly, then you may not be able to AA cancel all the way, especially if you want to hit all the returning damage of the one. And on the other hand, her 3 doesn't proc it. Different from other assassins, Pele has a very easy time landing damage on multiple targets, and as such, penetration or power is often better for her than the passive for a single target of Hydra's Lament. Doesn't mean it's a bad item though, it can still definitely be used on her. The three items that I would consider core on her are Assassin's Blessing, Warrior Tabai, and later on Titan's Bane, and I would always implement at least one pen and one power item, unless you're going for some tanky solo Pele stuff, which to be fair, wouldn't be bad at the moment either. And in case you're wondering, Shield of Regrowth does not proc on her passive. As for Relics, I would pretty much always go for Blink and Beats as long as it's possible somehow. Sometimes you will have to replace Beats with Aegis, if it's really unfortunate, but you really want to have that extra mobility from Blink in pretty much any situation. And for some quick example builds, Worry Tabai plus Brawler's Beatstick against the healing comp, Soul Eater, then Titan's Bane to Magi's Blessing into Shifter's Shield. This makes use of your extremely high power scalings while also giving you some extra defense, which can be very helpful. A slightly more unusual build that could for example be ran against a team comp that has a strong anti-heal focus but doesn't have as much CC and has a decent amount of burst would be Warrior Tabai being traded out for Masamune in late game, Heartseeker, Transcendence, Crusher, Hide of the Urchin and Titan's Bane. I think that should give you enough of an idea and you can experiment around with that. Last but not least, some notes on her weaknesses in terms of playstyle. She is super hard countered by crowd control. It is by far her biggest weakness in any regard, as she will get blown up very very quickly once she's locked down and her escape potential is limited. Especially a team that surrounds her will block off her dash as well and then she's kind of stuck. If she doesn't get her kills, if she doesn't get her snowballing, then she will have strong problems with teamfights in late game. She is definitely very strong in early game and she's definitely very strong in mid game and as long as she stays ahead in late game and she has that chase potential on enemies, she can work very very well with that. But if she gets in a situation where she falls behind and she gets tunneled into team fights a lot and gets locked down by the enemy team, she is very very low impact, especially because her abilities are very telegraphed as well, so they are kind of easy to avoid if you're in a position where you engage on her. And that's it for the Pelé guide, I got a lot longer than expected. I hope this was interesting and insightful. If you're new to the channel, click the sub button with the bell, it drives me out. Also, there will be another video later tomorrow, today, depending on where you are, which will be a first look at Overcooked 2. I'm gonna play that with Teats, so that might be interesting for some. And speaking of Teats, Teats has released yet another guide and is working on the next one already. So she's released an Ares guide and there will be a Thoth guide soon as well. They will be linked right here, feel free to check those out as well. As with the last one, I can highly recommend it, she's been on that grind 24-7 for the last days. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching, hope to see you all for the next one later or tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.